The Horizon study has been presented by my colleague Dr. Mary V. Mateus uh, uh, as a poster presentation, but it actually was presented yesterday on Friday and gained a lot of interest, and there are a variety of reasons for that. And um, the most important is that this is, constitutes a really unique class of drug. It's a peptidase enhanced cytotoxic. And the way to perhaps think about it, as we think about, for example, antibody drug conjugates that deliver to a targeted cell, you know, using BCMA, a cytotoxic warhead that in the case of, for example, GSK916, which is very promising, is an antitubulin drug. In a sense, melflufen is a targeted peptidase enhanced cytotoxic that delivers an alkylating moiety directly to the tumor cell. And how is this so? Well, it doesn't do so by virtue of a cell surface target. It does so because it's preferentially taken into a myeloma cell. And because these cells are particularly activated and particularly activated in the context of peptidase, the cytotoxics internalized by the cell and actually selectively sequestered. And that sequestration is really important because it spares surrounding tissue from potential injury and at the same time enhances um, the cytotoxic activity of the drug. Now, um, importantly, what we've learned is that the safety profile of this drug is very predictable. It tends to be myelosuppressive only, primarily thrombocytopenia that's reversible. But most importantly, we don't see mucositis, we don't see alopecia, and we don't see some of the other features that are more typical of less targeted, non-specific cytotoxic drugs. Now, in, in myeloma, we're blessed with immunomodulators, proteasome inhibitors, antibodies, other small molecule inhibitors, and lots of biologically derived strategies that are clearly great, yielding great benefits for our patients. And obviously you have all the excitement of cellular therapies and of course, CAR-T. The thing that's particularly attractive about melflufen in my view is that it's a once a month infusion over about 30 minutes or so, um, with combined with dexamethasone once a week in which we're seeing a clinical benefit rate of around 43% in our trial, that's MR or better, and a response rate, PR or better, solidly around 35%, which is quite remarkable. And a number of patients also enjoying stable disease. And the Horizon presentation from Dr. Mateus was particularly compelling because it mirrors what we saw in the earlier phase studies. And this, the Horizon, is multicenter international. And what we're seeing is a very consistent signal of both safety and efficacy. Now, not only do we have a partial response rate of around 35% or so, but most importantly, we have VGPRs and we have complete responses. And in this highly refractory population, and I think that was what attracted the interest of a lot of the attendees at uh, Mary V's presentation yesterday afternoon, uh, the, the, the patient population are enriched for, for, for high-risk features. And what do I mean by that? Over 40% of them were ISS3. Over 40% of them had high-risk cytogenetics. That's really compelling. And what we saw was that the response rate in those patients was similar to what it was in the less high-risk or less adver adverse-featured patients. So I think that's quite compelling. It's obviously early days. It's a single-arm trial. but. You know, I think, again, building on the previous experience, it's exciting. And I think that there's another trial ongoing, so-called OCEAN study, which is a randomized comparison of pomalidomide and dexamethasone compared to melflufendex that's ongoing much earlier. And I think that'll help us figure out who benefits best from this particular combination earlier in the disease.